CBS News legal analyst Ricky Kleeman joins me to talk about this legality, the impact of the arrest video, and in, in the end, what happened in that jail cell. What do you make, first of all, of this issue of marijuana? The uh, toxicology reports show substantial amounts of marijuana in her system. Does that matter in the end to how, where, and for what reason she was found dead hanging in her cell? Well, I think that we are going to find that she was found dead hanging in her cell because she committed suicide. The issue of whether there was foul play, in essence, of whether or not the police actually staged a suicide, I think will go off the table if it's even been on the table. But what you have in terms of the marijuana is just something that may or may not have contributed to her state of mind. The real essence of whether or not you can go forward on behalf of the family, this very articulate family, and go forth with a lawsuit of whether or not it can be successful may in many ways depend on the creativity of a civil lawyer. So why is that? I mean, when we watch the arrest, uh, no matter how you come down on this, it's an awkward, uncomfortable, stressful confrontation that we see. There is no question about that. There is nothing about that arrest that should please us. You have a police officer who is in at least verbally out of control, saying, I'm going to light you up, totally inappropriate. You have a police officer who stopped her for the most minor of things, changing lanes without a turn signal on a street, for heaven's sake. If you watch the dash cam video, there's barely a car that goes by. So we don't like the arrest. We just don't like it, a anyone who would watch it. Whether that arrest ultimately creates her suicide and therefore wrongful death, you have a three-day interval here. So there's many more factors that would go into the proof. So then let's, let's leave the arrest aside, problematic as it was. She's in the jail cell. There's booking forms where she apparently told the intake officer that she had felt depressed in the past, that she had felt suicidal at some point, but wasn't currently feeling those things, correct? Correct. And that's where the real problem is for the jailers in terms of a civil suit. If you had someone who says that they've had suicidal thoughts in the past, that they've been depressed in the press, and they say, hey, look, I'm fine now, there still may be an obligation on the part of the jailers to put her on a suicide watch, which would mean they would check her every 15 minutes. What happened here over a three-day period is that those checks certainly weren't done every 15 minutes. We don't even really quite know if they were done every hour. So what you had is a woman who's being held for heaven's sake on a $5,000 bond. One of my questions would be, well, where was everyone to post this bail? Um, in most places, a $5,000 bond would mean posting $500 in cash. Did she not reach out to people in order to post this bail? I mean, why is she languishing in there for three days? And during that three days, she apparently went through a downward spiral. And what is the obligation of the jailer? And the jailer's obligation is to keep his or her people in detention safe. So that's where the wrongful death suit comes in. I mean, but for the arrest, she wouldn't have been there. But the arrest did not cause the suicide.